Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back, and we are live here in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2016. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube. This is our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal to noise. Our next guest is Scott Now, who's the CTO of Hortonworks, and Dave Mariani, who's the CEO of AtScale, hot startup, former Yahoo platform uh, developer, now CEO of AtScale, who was formerly at Clout, which in a few years ago you were actually interviewing the Cube, both Cube alumni. Nice. Yes. Welcome back. All right, so what's Thanks. the story? Scott, as CTO, you're highlighting at scale, which there was some news out there, so for the folks out there, we covered this yesterday. A relationship is, is there between you guys. You're a hot growing startup, funded by uh, Ryan Floyd, one of the best venture capitalists in the Valley, uh, friend of theCUBE, uh, Amar Amadal is an investor. So you have a little geek holy water from the high priests thrown on your venture. What's the connection with Hortonworks? Give us, this, give us the update. You know, one of, the things, one of the things that uh, really drove the relationship is customer demand. So as customers are, are onboarding more and more data in their, in their clusters, they're looking at getting more and more access to that data. And certainly one of the most common ways for business analysts to look at data is through dimensional models. It's the way people think, spreadsheets, pivot tables, that kind of thing. And so by combining our technology, we can actually deliver an end-to-end -end solution for our customers where they don't have to move the data off their cluster into some other appliance to go do that work. They can simply play the data where it lies. And that's really important, especially uh, for our customers who are using their clusters not only for uh, structured transactional data, but for online archive where they've got yeah. 20, 30 years of history. They can have access to this and really understand how their businesses have moved. You know, Dave Vellante, who's uh, out the back east, and he, he and I do the Cuban interviews, he always says, when I squint through the, the market uh, activity to try to understand what the landscape looks like, so I'd love to get uh, your perspective, Dave and Scott, on, on the following thing, because one of the things we're looking at, the Cube, as we go to all the events is, what's going on right now? People are scratching their heads, all kinds of conspiracy theories, oh, Hadoop ecosystems is falling apart, or uh, the companies are pivoting, and there's, there's no apps, but when in reality, Companies are still being funded. Um, there's some softening. There's certainly change up and down the stack. You have a solution that's that's resonating with customers and growing fast. And Hadoop is evolving and changing. Our Ruth's talked about it. You talk about modern apps. But in reality, I see a lot of transformation going on. Certainly, there's pivoting for the right reason. People pivot to value. So, is it a platform of platforms? Is the Hadoop? Not necessarily that you know, silver bullet to be, oh my God, Hadoop's going to spring up all these apps. It actually seems to be more of a platform enabler. Platform of platforms where your partners are serving the app developers that are doing the Dockerization and all that stuff. Thoughts on that? On that? On you that know, I, like for me, like uh, Hadoop is uh, the data operating system, uh, and uh, and for me, business intelligence was is really the killer app. So you think about you know how to create ROI from data, and uh, you create ROI from from data by putting business users on it um, because you know they're going to create the value, not me. Uh, I can prep the data, but they're actually going to generate the value. Uh, so uh, without that, you know, and, and, and Hadoop started out and when I was at Yahoo, it was really sort of like this archive. Um, and, and to me, it was, we were really underselling that capability that if you bring interactive query into a Hadoop environment, which is what you're seeing now, which is really fantastic with, you know, with Hive Tez and with uh, Spark SQL and Presto and Drill, you're talking about opening up that platform for not just the batch workloads, but for the interactive workloads that make it uh, that make it an ROI story, not just a cost saving story. So Scott, that's so that we would agree totally we've seen that. The apps that are killer apps today is the analytics. Just like email was a killer app for the web and the internet. But the question now comes down is there is a huge app enterprise specifically, developer market boom. We saw Docker containers and DockerCon exploding with activity. So those don't necessarily aren't Hadoop developers. They're, they're more leveraging a platform, whether it's some BI stuff integrated into an app. Tease that out, because some people are looking at that as a proxy for this, and, and it seems to be the wrong picture. If you're looking at that market, you're not really looking at this market. Do, we, do you agree? What's your thoughts? Um, 
and yeah, share some. Yeah, and I agree there's a lot of confusion, right? So I think one of the big things, I, being data-centric as I am, I think about it more from the perspective of Hadoop and the Hadoop ecosystem really becoming the center of gravity for data because of the flexibility, because of the cost, because of the extensibility, because of the robust ecosystem, and because of just the sheer growth in connected devices and all this data it has to go somewhere, yeah. right? And so this is becoming the center of the universe as it relates to data, data in motion, data at rest, and, and data analytics. And into that plug, yeah. so yes, platform yeah. is a word that gets used. Into that obviously gets plugged applications and content delivery, right? So the data, just storing data is fun, but so what, right? Yeah, so yeah. how do you get something back out? And then, and then we think, you know, as part of that platform story, and we've talked, and some of your other guests here today probably have talked about connected data platforms, we also think not only is it the center of gravity, but it'll also be physically diverse. Some of the data will be in the cloud. Logically, you'll have your data lake, but some will be in one cloud, some will be in another cloud, some will be on-prem. And so being able to connect those things without having to physically move the data, and uh, being able to connect those things and also being able to spawn applications that are containerized and can move around that grid of data is a really important technology difference. So you could have a connected platform first before containers can move around a platform or network. Otherwise, okay. you don't need containers to move anywhere. So Dave, I love the OS thing, because that was my degree and my computer science degree in the 80s was OS as systems guy. But let's take that to the next level, and, and I want to ask you specifically the question. If, because Docker really kind of points, the Docker madness points to me at least, that um, uh, DevOps won. Did the DevOps ethos of infrastructure as code won. Okay. Yeah. So if you believe that, maybe you can maybe not believe it, but if developers aren't really provisioning hardware like they were, how do you take that to data? Is data at code a new concept? Is, is the data the operating systems that's enabling a new abstraction layer, or? It's, it, it's so, so here's the way I think of it. You know, when I was at Yahoo, um, um, uh, Jerry Yang and, and David Philo, they pounded into our head that we don't throw data away. Um, and if you think about that, that statement, that's, there's a lot of requirements there because if you don't throw data away, it means you got to store it someplace and you can't pre-process it or pre-aggregate or pre-structure it. Because if you do that, it's too costly. So you will have to, you'll be forced to throw data away. So we invented Hadoop to be able to basically do that and, and capture the data. But what that, what that actually resulted in is, is that you capture the data now and you add structure later when you have the questions. And so the whole paradigm of data warehousing where you pre-structure data for questions you had today was flipped on its head because then you structure data for when you have the questions, that whole schema on read concept. So people are always focused on the scalability and the cost savings you get with Hadoop. For me, it's that flexibility of schema on read where now I can adapt my data to solve the, and answer the questions I have right now. Talk about, take a minute to talk about your product, the product that you have and the problem that it's solving and the impact to your customers this relationship with Hortonworks. Yeah, that's uh, uh, so. So Scott alluded to it before, where we we're selling to the same customers, and we have common customers. And here we are, we're selling to the same customers separately. Um, and the customer just wants the solution. They don't, you know, they don't want the pieces. They want their solution. And so, you know, I, I was really, I, I'm really excited about how we can remove friction for the customer. And we already see this. Where, hey, guess what? Hortonworks has the relationships. They have the paper. So why not why not simplify life for the customer and say it's you want some at scale with that um, and and to me that is uh, that is making life friction free or at least removing friction for that customer. And you're targeting the BI data user that doesn't want the complexity of dealing with and and that want their own visualization. They want the they want to use the, the tools to access the data that that are right for their company. So you know we don't enforce our own visualization layer, we have none. Because Excel and Tableau and Click and Business Objects and MicroStrategy and Cognos and custom written code, there's a bunch of different data consumers. And so what we want is we want to expose all that data that we're landing in Hadoop, that beautiful data, we want to expose it virtually to all those tools and give one place to secure it, one place to manage performance, and one place to define the semantics of that data. So you when you solve, need it. So you solve the headache of the management of the data, but you also provide that vitamins to provide growth. Yes, yes. 
quick question. Um, Scott, you talked about data in motion, data at rest. It's been a big theme. Um, for, you know, now with uh, Hortonworks data flow and data platform, and we want analytics, um, you know, to join them, and we have multiple types of analytics. What else might we, without you know, naming names, what other types of analytics should we expect to see as a bridge between the two? Well, I think you know the one thing that we're seeing, and, and uh, Apache Metron is one example of one of those applications where you're able to combine traditional data at rest and events that are happening in real time. So you've got machine learning code that actually, in that case, looks for the bad guys, right? Looks for uh, uh, cyber threat potential, and continues to model what those patterns look like, and then applies those continuously updating patterns to data that are streaming in real time. And the value behind that is you now, instead of uh, looking at your historical data to understand was I hacked, and if the answer is yes, it's too late, you were hacked, to am I being hacked and can I do something about it now? And so that, that's a great example that's kind of horizontal across industry, but of course in a, in a connected consumer kind of world, Connected consumers want it now and they want it to be relevant. And it can't just be, hey, you're a Platinum customer, so here's the list of stuff I do for Platinum. It's got to be, you're Scott, I know everything that we've done over the course of our interaction and here's how you want to be treated and therefore these are the treatments I'm going to deliver to you in real time while you're on your phone, while you're in, your, in my store, while you're on my website as a seamless experience. So just really quickly, Metron then is, it's a very horizontal, widely applicable app and it's a design pattern for other ISVs. It's a design pattern. So how do you take analytics and execute analytic content in real time? And, and so whether it be in, in a business, a consumer business, how do you move offers from post-transaction, hey, you bought this, why don't you buy that, to, gee, you landed on my website, I think this is probably what you're looking for, let me serve that up to you now. Okay. So George, there's, there's a, another a, another angle too. It's like you know one of our customers, our co one of our common customers, uh, is predicting churn, right? Churn is 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 is, is the, the the key sort of metric of profitability for them is to eliminate that or lower that. So they have data scientists who are writing algorithms, uh, machine learning algorithms to be able to predict an alert, but. The data is gigantic. We're talking about half a trillion rows of data that need to be analyzed, and they're using Hadoop and AtScale to actually explore the data to actually inform the algorithms they're writing for their machine learning that are, that are, that are using streams. So it's the combination of, I, I, I need to use this virtual cube or I need to use this dimensional model to even understand w how I even author my algorithms to predict that trend. Okay. So it's a perfect blending of, you know, looking at the granular data, but then informing it and putting it into production as a, as a, as a constant running process. Right. Pretty cool. Dave, Scott, thanks for sharing the insight on the Cube. Really appreciate it. Good to see you again. A lot of technical action going on. Good, good partnering. Benefits to customers, and uh, great to see the success. Congratulations, Dave, on your startup and continued success. And uh, Portmore's good, good, good news there. This is the Cube here, live in Silicon Valley. We are. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're in day two. I'm John Furrier, George Gilbert. You watching the Cube. We'll be right back with more after this short break.